What's up everybody? Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Today we are going to do some work on the Colorado ZR2, fix one of the biggest problems that faces this truck in my opinion, and we're gonna do it on the cheap. So let's jump into it right now. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be doing something with the Colorado ZR2 that I told you really needs done in my opinion, and that is of course a level kit. So if you guys could tell, there is quite a significant stock rake from the rear to the front of the truck. I would say it is very close to two inches. So basically what I mean whenever I say stock rake is the rear here is higher than the front. And it's like that for a reason, I'm sure. It has something to do with fuel economy as well as when you tow, it levels out everything. But let's face it, even the people out there who tow all the time are not towing more than they're not towing. So at the end of the day, this truck looks kind of odd unless it is towing a fairly heavy load in the back. There is a fix for this though. And like I said, it's pretty cheap. So for $45 on Amazon, and of course I'll link it in the description down below, you can get yourself this guy right here. And this is all it takes. This is about a 5.8 spacer that will go on top of the strut on the front of the Colorado ZR2, even if you have the DSSV shocks. Now, if you trust Amazon's Fitment Guide, it will tell you this does not fit, but I am about to show you today why that's false and the fact that it does actually fit. Now, what this is gonna do for me is this is going to allow me to run a bigger tire. So that will in turn give me an even larger lift on the truck. So stock tires here are 31s. I'm going to be pushing into a 33 with this 5.8 spacer. Now you may be asking, how does a 5.8 spacer give you enough room for this, Justin? Well, 5.8 doesn't actually equate to 5.8 of level. Once we put this in, we're gonna gain almost an inch and a half of level in the front. And with that said, there has been people with this particular spacer that has successfully fit 33s on this truck. And that is my intention today. So let's start into the process. All right, guys, so this is my truck here. I've already done the driver's side just so I could give you guys exactly what it is you need to do and how to do it here on the passenger side. These are the tools we're gonna need. There's not a whole lot required here. This is actually a relatively quick mod. Uh, me and my friend were able to pull it off in probably 25, 30 minutes max. But if you have these particular tools, they'll make the entire process a little bit faster. So obviously you're gonna need a breaker bar. You're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket. You're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter and a 15 millimeter. Then we have an impact and of course a power ratchet. Other than that you'll need a 7.8 socket or 22 millimeter for the lug nuts of the wheels. Over here we have a couple ratcheting wrenches an 18 and 17 millimeter. Now those are for the top of the struts where the three nuts exist. The stock ones are 18 and the new ones are going to be 17 so I have one of each size. 3.8 ratchets that will help get into some tighter spaces that the impact can't get into. And then of course we have this the Max Racing 5.8 spacer. Now this is exactly 100% the same as what Rough Country sells, only this is about $5 less. It is basically just a solid piece of aluminum and there's really no difference between Max Racing's and Rough Country's. They're both powder coated black. They both come with the exact same hardware. It's up to you. If you want to save five bucks to get the same exact thing, like I said, they'll be linked in the description below. If you want to buy the Rough Country one for $5 more just to support them, I guess you can if you'd like to. But other than that, we are also using the stock bottle jack out of the truck, possibly my floor jack. But once you get the level in, the floor jack is probably not going to be enough to keep the truck up off the ground. So the stock bottle jack with a brick or a piece of wood underneath it should be enough to keep it off the ground while you're putting your wheel back on. So we're going to go ahead and measure fender to the ground just to give you a good idea of how much extra room you're going to gain here because like I said that spacer is only five eighths of an inch thick but it's going to give us about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half more height on the actual truck. All right so here we go measuring the stock height from the center of the wheel up to the bottom of the fender flare. We are at 36 and five eighths inches high so 36 five eighths Let's go ahead and get this mod done and see how much height we gain. All right, guys, so here we are on the passenger side of my truck. Like I said, this is where we're starting for today because I've already done the driver's side. But if you guys haven't seen the video before where I was talking about blacking out your Midnight Edition Colorado, this is one of the things we're gonna have to focus on today because these are caps over top of the actual lug nuts. Those have to come off in order for us to get to the lug nuts to take the wheel off. These little tweezer-like things are what is going to help us accomplish that. Now, this actually comes with the kit if you buy these. Of course, I'll link them in the description below if you guys haven't seen that video yet and if you want to purchase these for yourselves you definitely can but these are pretty easy you basically just stick them in here pinch down and then pull and it takes the cap off so we're going to do that five more times and then we're going to get this wheel off so we can get into the actual leveling kit So 
So the next step after you remove the wheel is to start breaking some of these bolts loose. So first we're gonna go ahead and remove the bracket holding your brake lines. Like I said, that is a 13 millimeter bolt. With the brake bracket loose, we'll come down here and remove the little bracket holding the ABS line on as well. Next, we're gonna go ahead and break free the sway bar. Like I said, 15 millimeter up top, 13 millimeter on the bottom. And with that loose, you can go ahead and actually just pull the entire sway bar link out. Next is the 21 millimeter tie rod and nut. Next is gonna be the upper control arm. It is an 18 millimeter nut kind of hidden underneath the back here. And I'm gonna start it off with just a regular 3 8 ratchet. Once it's loose, I'm gonna go ahead and zip it off with a power tool. And of course, once this comes completely free, it's kind of gonna drop. So be prepared for that. And then lastly is gonna be the two 15 millimeter bolts underneath the strut to allow us to pull the whole thing out once we release the top nuts. Once you release the 21 millimeter nut on the side of the tie rod end here, if it doesn't come right out, just give it a gentle tap with a mallet or something, just like that, and it will allow you to have enough space to pull this out. So after all that stuff's out, the last bit is the three nuts up on top of the strut. Like I said, those are 18 millimeter. I'm gonna use a ratcheting wrench to get to them. That's the easiest way to do it. And then we are in business. One hour later. So with the top strut nuts off, we now have everything else loosened up here where we have enough room to kind of pull the strut down and give us enough space up there to stick the 5 8 inch aluminum spacer. This is your spacer and you're just gonna slip it in there and place it on top of the existing studs on the top of the strut. So that's pretty much it. All we had to do was just basically slide that strut down a little bit and then you'll just move it right back up into place. And you'll know when you're in place because those lugs up at the top of the strut will go right through the strut tower here. Now, after everything is in place, obviously we're just gonna go ahead and bolt everything back up. Right after this is installed, you're gonna wanna use your new strut nuts here. These are a 17 millimeter instead of an 18 millimeter like the stock ones. They have a much lower engagement on the thread here. So there's more than enough engagement and there's not gonna be an issue. And they are also a locking nut there with the nylon part that will ensure that these things never back off on their own. When reinstalling everything guys to get the control arm into the actual spindle here, you gotta devise something like a pry bar or in my case, this is a breaker bar wedged into the strut tower here. And you're just gonna push down on it enough to give you enough room there to get that 18 millimeter nut back in place. So now we're just gonna tighten this up, tighten up all the rest of these bolts, and then we're good to go to put the wheel back on. If you've made it this far, you are pretty much done. Whenever you guys get to the step of reconnecting the sway bar, if you're doing this like I did, the passenger side after the driver's side, the sway bar doesn't have any give. So if this bolt is not long enough, you're gonna wanna employ some sort of jack. In my case, this is the factory bottle jack underneath the wheel spindle here. We're gonna just kind of push up on everything. So this will show enough thread to get the stock nut back on top of the sway bar extension here. All right, guys, and that is it. We have the wheel back on, everything tightened up. Obviously, I gotta put my black caps back on the lug nuts, but you can tell just by looking at it, there is much more of a level appearance to it now. Like I said, this is gonna allow me to run a 33 up front with hopefully no trimming or at least minimal trimming. I will keep you guys updated on that fact, but it is looking a lot better. Bigger tires are in the future, but for now, the 5 8 inch block gives us about an inch and a quarter level. We're gonna measure it out here right now. So we got a pretty significant increase here, guys. We were at 36 and three quarters, so we were about right here and we are now at about 38 and a half. Now I have not moved the vehicle yet, so it will probably drop down to about 38 and a quarter, but that's still giving us about an inch and a quarter, inch, a little less than an inch and a half, somewhere around there, just like the manual says that we would get with this particular kit. So yeah, not bad. At the end of the day, like I said, that block was only five eighths of an inch thick, but we get about an inch and a quarter level in the front end here, and that's enough hopefully for some 33s. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. The last thing I would need to do here with the truck is get an alignment. Obviously, anytime you change anything with the suspension, you wanna make sure that the alignment is good so you don't tear up your tires. And in this case, I'm probably gonna be taking it to 4WP, which is, in my case, about 20 minutes from where I live. You would wanna check and see if they're near you as well, because from what I understand, they use some newer equipment up there, so there's no chance that they're gonna scratch up your wheels or anything like that. And I'm gonna come out of there feeling pretty good about the alignment that they gave me. So overall, this project was not too difficult. 
belt. It's really just a couple bolts and at the end of the day, an alignment. And now you can run up to a 33 inch tire with minimal to hopefully no trimmings. That should do it for today, guys. If you liked what you saw, please give me a big thumbs up. If you have any questions about the ZR2 or anything we did here today, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get you an answer. But like I said, guys, we gained about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half of ground clearance from the stock Colorado over to the now leveled ZR2. Definitely highly recommend this. Once I get in alignment, I will speak more to how it rides and everything like that. So stay tuned for that update video. But guys, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do. You're going to miss a lot of ZR2 content if you don't. And as always, I will catch you in the next upload.